You will see this in our program. Hello, this is Kazan University. Today we will talk about why one of the oldest universities in Russia is the best choice for receiving an international education. Uh, students in our class are all very friendly, smart and ambitious and always willing to help each other. My language is my friend. Why international students choose the Institute of Philology and Intercultural Communication most often? We have uh, some kind of partnership with uh, big companies. The most popular what specialists in the IT sector are prepared at Kazan University. I, I like living in the university because the situation, the, the condition of uh, the dorms is really good. It is great to study and have fun together. What are the living conditions for international students on their student campus? One of the most multinational institute of Kazan Federal University is ready to welcome international students. Almost every fourth KFU student from abroad studies here. Of course, we are talking about the Institute of Philology and Intercultural Communications. Citizens from 30 countries all over the world have made their choice for this place. The history of formation of the Department of Literature at Kazan University dates back to 1804. For more than two centuries, linguistics, literature and art have been taught here. Kazan School of Linguistics is well known far outside Russia. Its founder was a linguist of Polish origin, Bauden de Kurtane. He and his followers were ahead of that time. Then they anticipated the development of many sections of linguistics. Kazan science are the world's first researchers of language in its social aspects. As early as in the 19th century, they considered the recognition of the equally for all languages as one of their fundamental principles. Now, all the students and professors are equal here in their rights, in their passion for languages, literature or art. The institute is one of the largest in Kazan Federal University. Here is more than 4,000 students, dozens of well-known professors, hundreds of teachers and staff. This is probably why the institute is so popular among foreigners. Sofia Arlova found out what areas they choose. Russia is a country ever expanding a foreign policy and business. And translators are people who help to streamline effect communication. In the last five years, the number of international students at our Institute of Philology and Intercultural Communication has increased fivefold. Five years ago we had about 300 students and now we have over 1,500. I think this speaks for itself. Our programs are in high demand. The Institute of Philology and Intercultural Communication prepares translators, interpreters and teachers of English and Russian languages. Future teachers must not only master the language, but also understand how to teach it to others. We give not only theoretical knowledge of Russian language, but also methodological, which means technology of teaching. Methodology answers three questions. What to study, how to study and why study, this and not that. And also keeping in mind the nature of our audience, which are students from Turkey countries, European countries and African countries. For each of the groups, there is a different approach and methodology of teaching Russian as a foreign language. The Institute of Philology offers bachelor's, master's and PhD programs. You can submit documents to study at Kazan Federal University right now. The admission is open until August. Applications for degree programs are accepted through online system study in the university, which is called Budu Studentum. Uh, a bachelor's degree requires at least four years of full-time university-level study. The scope of these programs is 240 uh, credits. The programs follow a specific curriculum with an academic load of about 26-30 uh, hours per week. The Institute of Philology comprises three higher schools. High School of Russian and Foreign Philology, High School of National Culture and Education, and High School of Russian Language and Intercultural Communication. In the later, 80% of students are from other countries. They study Russian and English. 
Duan is a student from China. She is enrolled in a master program. She says that the most difficult thing is not the studies themselves. For example, our class has students from all over the world, uh, from many different cultures, from many different countries, and I think it's very difficult to be a part of this class. But uh, finally, I have found that uh, students in our class are all very friendly, smart and ambitious, and always willing to help each other. So, uh, not uh, difficult is, is not to be conquered. Abrar, a Yemeni student, is the same opinion about students of Kazan University. No, it wasn't. I mean, I already uh, mentioned that there are a lot of people here, so it was um, more uh, easy to it was easier to communicate with people, it was hard to adapt. Um, so I think that's like the biggest um, good point here in Kazan. It's easy actually. It's easy to adapt to this uh, place. Uh, you can, with uh, many contact uh, with the teachers and the students, you can visit the museum, the scenery, and then you find that this environment is very good and uh, the people there is very friendly. Some of the students are still pondering their future professions, but some are already firmly decided on what they will do after graduation. David is from Uzbekistan. He is only in his sophomore year, but he has already decided to remain in Kazan and teach English. After my finishing university, I wanted to open my own school because I wanted to give the, uh, the knowledge for for all the students because uh, I think that every people and every student wanted to get a lot of knowledge about the English yeah, because as you know the English language is the first language of the world. Shaknasa has not yet decided where she wants to stay, remain in Russia, return to her homeland Turkmenistan or move somewhere else. But she knows that she wants to share her knowledge. Uh, yes, of course, a teacher, but I haven't decided uh, in where a place, uh, but uh, I think, uh, I hope it will be the place where I can get a new perspective on my life, increase my communicative skills and also develop myself in order to gain more goals in life. Mastery of foreign languages, technologies of teaching and experience of communication with people of different backgrounds. Such skills are helpful in sharing knowledge and experience with the wild world. Marika Mohamed Lamain from Mali is a PhD student of the Institute of Philology and already teaches English. If you know more languages, Okay, it means that you can talk to different people and you can read different books and, you know, it just can um, expand your horizons. And, uh, yeah, that's why I decided to, you know, um, choose linguistics, yeah, so the study of uh, languages, yes, to know how different languages function and to be able to help, you know, people, I mean, to impart my knowledge to them. Foreign languages are not only necessary in science, business or education. Public servants also need such knowledge. Our alumni are mainly employed in education, but they also find demand in public service in their home countries, such as diplomatic bodies and in media. No country can be fully isolated in our world. The exchange of knowledge, resources and technology is something that improves the quality of our lives. But this is only achievable if we understand each other and speak the same languages. Sofia Arlova, Hafiz Garaev, Kazan University. The most in-demand profession in the world right now is an IT sector. Of course, it is a long list of specialists from data science to front-enders and mobile application developers. Now in Russia, the government creates the most comfortable conditions for specialists in this sector, even for students. Kazan Federal University has even two institutes that prepare IT professionals. One of them is the Institute of Information Technology and Intelligence Systems. We will talk to the director of the institute, Mikhail Abramsky, about what areas of study they have and with whom students and graduates work together. Our guest for today, Mikhail Abramsky, Director of Information uh, Technologies and Intelligence Systems. Mikhail Mikhailovich, good day. Hi, thank you uh, for the invitation. At first, I would like to ask you about uh, students 
and what kind of uh, students for IT sector are trained at Kazan Federal University? Well, actually, speaking about my institute, uh, we were established in uh, 2011 as the Greenfield for uh, IT education, for the new model of IT education. So uh, we invited companies who became our partners in education. So now we are, uh, we, we are still the place where a university interacts with industry uh, and most of our professional cor courses is uh, taught by um, our guests from companies. So firstly, of course, we train developers, uh, software developers, but especially web developers, uh, mobile developers and uh, enterprise developers. Uh, second thing is um, that we go via whole life cycle of software engineering. So here is development, but we also train like analysts, system analysts, business analysts, uh, then uh, architects, software architects, uh, then uh, of course developers and then testers, QA engineers. Uh, some of our graduate students, they become uh, project managers. And also we have uh, several uh, areas of scientific interest. So we can say that we also train for uh, the developers of software for robotics. Uh, also the applied data science. So not the like fundamental models, but the technologies of artificial intelligence that uh, uh, is useful for software development. And also we have the large area of students who study game development and AR, augmented reality and virtual reality technologies. So mostly this is, this is the whole stack of our, our students. You mentioned overseas partners and maybe you can, uh, what kind of companies do you cooperate with? Maybe you can name them. Well, uh, firstly, uh, of course, the companies from uh, Tatarstan, uh, like uh, ICEL, Technocratia, uh, Bars Group, uh, Flatstack, and some of them, they uh, actually, what, 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 I, what I can say that they can, uh, they have offices not all, all, only in uh, Tatarstan and not only in Russia, some of them. And so uh, our international students, they come to the companies where they can work just with no problem. Uh, also, uh, of course, we have uh, some kind of partnership with uh, big companies like Yandex, uh, VK, uh, and uh, Sber, uh, and Tinkoff. Uh, so, we have some education projects with them. We have some support from them in our education. So we take online courses from them and implement them in our educational process. Uh, speaking about the world companies, okay, we can mention Huawei. Uh, we have the course of networking that is based on their uh, Huawei Academy. Uh, we have uh, the track of uh, Internet of Things from Samsung. Uh, so, well, any company of any level, uh, I think that we can find it, its products or its support in our education process. Okay, you mentioned Russian companies, international partners, and we'll talk about students. So what about uh, graduates who already graduate your institute? So uh, uh, where basically and usually they work, maybe uh, you have some cases then they work abroad and you can uh, say about it. Well, there are different cases about our graduates, uh, really different cases. Uh, well, firstly, of course, they work in Tatarstan because uh, first five years, we didn't have uh, the uh, government paid education, uh, like budget uh, students. We had only, uh, only paid students by themselves, but the best of our uh, self-paid students were funded by Republic of Tatarstan that uh, this is called granting system and for the receiving grant our graduates they should work in any company of Tatarstan being IT specialist uh, for the number of years uh, equal to the number of years that they received granting grant so they actually stay in Tatarstan but well uh, I would like to say that Kazan and Tatarstan is a really good place for, for living and for relocating and uh, to live and uh, study and work. Uh, so some of them, uh, some of our graduates, they of course move uh, in other cities, in Moscow, in St. Petersburg and all over Russia in different offices of uh, our partner companies because they have offices all over the country. 
Uh, and what I can say also about the granting system, but it's, um, uh, it's for Russian students, but I think that the, our neighbors from the near uh, countries, they can also participate. But um, also some of our graduates, they go abroad. Uh, some of them, they go abroad for the part, just for part-time, as like the internship, then they come back. Some of them, they, uh, of course, work in uh, uh, companies of Europe, of Asia, well, uh, again, for example, Huawei or uh, some other companies. We have uh, the students who work there as developers, mostly, mostly uh, students who go abroad uh, to work abroad. They are mostly developers. Uh, well, we also have one case that um, one of our students, uh, international student, uh, he became the deputy in uh, his uh, own countries. <laughs> mm -hmm. So th such things happen. But again, mostly our graduates, they work abroad if they go abroad as developers. Okay, they go abroad and they work as developers. You mentioned Huawei. Uh, so we know that uh, Russian programmers are known all around the world and uh, some of them have great positions in such uh, companies like Google, for example. And um, so maybe, why do you think uh, our programmers are so in demand and they uh, have a great uh, value in the market, especially from Eastern Europe? Well, a couple of, couple of reasons, I think. Uh, firstly, that's still our educational system uh, that was popular quite for a long period of time, the Soviet uh, educational system, the Russian educational system, uh, who prepared really strong mathematicians. And uh, of course, mathematics is the basis of the programming, not of the development, but now the math is the basis of the data science. So uh, actually the data science was kind of um, renaissance of the mathematics for IT. And uh, we still have such strong mathematical schools in Kazan University too. Uh, that's why our uh, IT specialists they are, uh, have the strong uh, fundamental education in the area of mathematics. Second thing is that we have really interesting cases of uh, uh, some of our, our uh, citizens from Russia who invented something in IT. For example, uh, just one case, Igor Sosoyev, he uh, developed uh, the Nginx server, and uh, Nginx is the server uh, that is used for like 30% of whole websites all over the world. Uh, so, well, also I think that uh, our developers, the same as developers from other countries, but uh, our especially, they are open-minded. And they uh, actually, um, being in IT, they learn uh, communication, they learn uh, English, they learn how to work when you have the decentralized team. And uh, uh, that's why they uh, can, uh, can pass the interview really good. So I think many reasons, but most of them I mentioned. You, yes, you mentioned the advantages of your institute and uh, in our program we talk about international students yes. who want to uh, enroll and enter the Kazan University. So how uh, they can uh, um, apply documents and how they can enroll your institute? Yeah, firstly I would like to say that all our programs are open for, our, for the internationals. Most of our programs they are in Russian, but we opened uh, this year a master program in artificial intelligence in English and it's online. So our uh, students uh, don't have to come to Russia. They can study uh, in online uh, using uh, webinar systems. Uh, so for application, our students can go to the site that's called abiturient.kpfu.ru and uh, they can register there and apply for any program. Our program that we, uh, uh, that we have, uh, it is uh, software engineering, uh, 090304 uh, in bachelor and 090404 in master student. So we have the coding system. Uh, so um, actually we are open to our international students. We usually make a group of international students. We have their tutors, we have their some kind of advisors. 
uh, we have the teachers who can even teach, who, can, uh, who have the patience for teaching the international students. Uh, of course, the, it is very difficult to them. I was the international student. I lived for one year in States and I was international student. I know how it's difficult to uh, get in the class when you're, you, when firstly it's a language problem, uh, problem even if, if, even if you know the language, it's still the problem. So we help our internationals and uh, we have uh, already uh, some graduates, but uh, now the number of internationals in our institute is increasing. Uh, now it's around like 80 students. Mm, and it's kind of uh, like 1% of our uh, students, but uh, th this percentage is getting bigger each year. Mikhail Mikhailovich, I want to thank you for our conversation and wish all the best in your work and maybe more and more international students. Yeah. Interesting uh, project with uh, overseas partners. Yeah. Uh, so very, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It is software engineering. You can apply for admission. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, international students of the Institute of Information Technology and Intelligence Systems have created an English-speaking club for entrepreneurs. The idea belongs to a freshman from Syria, Abdurrahman Morido. He wants to start his own business in technologies. So he decided to come to Russia and enroll at the ITIS Institute. Now he studies artificial intelligence problems. As he aspires, the club should inspire students to open their own startups. Every student can acquire new experience, which improves communication skills as well as partake in complex projects, plan their work and change their thinking. All this is achievable based on international experience. The club members can not only become qualified professionals in ITE after graduation, but also learn entrepreneurship skills. All kind of students are welcome here. Programmers, designers, marketing specialists or journalists. The Startup Club caters to everyone who is eager to open their own business and to work in a like-minded team. Most foreigners who study at Kazan Federal University live in special student houses, dormitories. Most of them are located in the campus, built up time ago to accommodate athletes for the World Universiate Championship. That's why the campus is called the Universiate Village. This is one of the best living conditions for students created in Russia. Here students do not just live, but receive full-fledged assistance in everything. There is all needed for a comfortable life, from special rooms for rest and study to sport grounds, a medical clinic and security of high level. Here you can find help with adaptation and participate in various student activities and events. We will tell you how international students live and why many of them do not even want to leave Kazan. When you are far from home, it's very important to have a place to return to into the evening, to have a rest and to work on your product. A place that is safe, accessible, with nice infrastructure and that can become a new home. For many students of Kazan Federal University, their university village has become such a place. One of them is a man, a student of medicine from Iraq who has lived in Russia for six years. He calls Universet village his place of power. It's very important to feel yourself comfortable. And uh, for me, the university village is a very great place to me to study, to find uh, new friends. Um, here's different zone like football zone, uh, zona for park zona. In this comfortable environment, Omar is not only a successful student but also a volunteer. He was awarded as the best medical volunteer in Tatarstan and best overall volunteer in 2020. Kamaluddin, one of the former dealers of the village, formally reminds us on the years he spent here and won the Grand Prix of the Student of the Year in Tatarstan, period in. 2019. As he says, he was much helped by his mentors, teachers, fellow students and of course his family. Tatarstan is not only the place where I am studying, where I have worked, but also the place where I now have a family. A family of my friends, my acquaintances, the community of students that accepted me for who I am and helped me grow and develop. 
приняла меня. Камаледин works at the Ministry of Youth Affairs of Tatarstan and continues his PhD studies at Kifu. He calls the university village his home, the place where all his friends and his student life are. Here you can also see several pitches where students play football, volleyball, basketball, badminton and other sports. Not far away is a field where Indian students often enjoy a game of cricket. So actually uh, we have been playing this cricket uh, since a long time. The, uh, in India, actually, we, uh, we won the World Cup in 1983. So since then, there was a craze, like people loved it so much that they wanted to play this, this game. And uh, it was the first time like we won something in the world level. So that's why it, uh, we got motivated and we wanted to play this game more and more. The cricket team is a mature and plays year-round, both on grass and on snow. However, there are many professional collectives at the university as well. One of them is Shark, a dance crew. This year we become best dance team in KFU. It's a big honor for us, for our team and for our friends from all over the university who helps us and give us energy and love. The Shark team counts over 30 members and they are all CAFU students and live at the university village. They rehearse two or three times a week. They started with Uzbek dances but now also perform many dances of other peoples of the world. We are four dance team. We are Shark! Whoa! Every house in the village has a cultural organizer who knows everything about arts teams and upcoming events. The university village welcomes 9,000 students. A third of them are overseas nationals from 101 countries. Students are mainly placed in accordance with their institute. Rooms accommodate three or four persons. Everyone has a bed, a chair and a nightstand. There is also a desk in case you don't want to leave for a study room. Every room has a shower and a restroom. A kitchen is shared by several rooms. The university village has laundry rooms in every house and a separate round-o'clock laundry for emergencies. Well, actually, I, I like living in the university because the situation, the, the condition of uh, the dorms is really good. Like, uh, the room itself is really clean and the, guy, the students who live in the university is really, really good. And also, I like uh, living in the university uh, because uh, in here, in the university, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not only Russian students, also uh, students from other uh, country. Apart from that, the university village has a canteen and coffee machines, a post office, an internet provider, a student clinic, and there are many grocery stores in the vicinity with the rich toys of necessities. The houses are located for students of the preparatory school, for international students. The young people are only starting to learn Russian, so they often come for help a house president, someone who is fluent in both Russian and English and well versed in student life. The president is always eager to help with translation and give directions. We help uh, to adopt them uh, by um, for like firstly we try to uh, give them accommodation in our dormitories um, to uh, tell them the rules that we have here um, and we also um, tell them that uh, drinking and smoking here is not okay it's, it's uh, wrong so actually we try to help all the students if they have any questions doesn't matter if it's about russian language if it's about something that's happening in their homes so we are always trying to solve the problem they have we also tell them where are located, for example, the stores, where they can buy, buy products, food or something like that. So if they have some questions, whatever they need, we, we try to help them. We try to do like, as the best as we can to make their life here in Kazan more comfortable and we can say like more properly and like easier to live and study at the same time. Christopher is not only a house president, he is also the port head of the International Friendship Club. 
It's a union of international students who, among other things, organizes the Mosaic of People Festival, where students showcase their traditions, culture, cuisine and handcrafts. They also celebrate various holidays such as Halloween, Christmas, Lunar New Year and Nowruz. Hold concerts for the best room and best cooking. Another student club, Polymir, which can be translated as multiworld, specializes in scientific events. It was established just recently but has already put together several conferences. Our organization also cooperates with many other students and uh, um, students organizations in Russia mainly and in Indonesia. For the last year, our our organization is only one year old. We had, so we hold already many events about uh, international relations, society and environment. Some people enroll in Kazan University to make advancements in science. Others to help others, yet others to better understand local culture. Obviously, because uh, also because of uh, in Kazan, when you came, you can uh, you can uh, meet uh, uh, ultimately two cultures like the Russian culture and the Tatar. The Universidad will it always brims with events, competitions and celebrations. But even when there are none, life is definitely never dull. Its safe and comfortable atmosphere really makes in a second home for students of Kazan Federal University. Sofia Arlova, Hafiz Garayev, Kazan University. The Best International Student of Russia, Festivals of the Peoples of the World, Forum of International Students. These are only few events planned by the Russian Association of International Students to promote the status of international students in country. This was discussed at the meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Association in Moscow. Students and administration of Kazan Federal University took part in the meeting as well. Our university was represented by students from Turkmenistan, Iran and Macedonia. They participated in the All-Russian Congress of International Students. Of course, they spoke not only about the organization of holidays, but also about the issues of all the students' concern. Today, the association cooperates with all Russian universities, which have uh, foreign students. There are international partners as well. This helps to promote and unite youth organizations from all the world. Further, in the digest, we will tell you about other events that took place at the university. Ilshad Rohimbay, alumnus of Kazan Federal University, is working on a first ever psychological ethnic thriller. The film featuring a renowned Russian actor, Viktor Sukharukov, is set to see light in the autumn of 2022. It is a huge investment in the provincial movie industry of the Republic of Tatarstan. We can prove that here we can make movies, realize them and invite actors. It is a huge motivation for other filmmakers to stay here and not leave for Moscow. Students of the Institute of Chemistry have won an international competition. The event featured 122 participants from 13 countries, United Kingdom, China, South Korea, Hungary, Russia and others. Participating in such competitions is such an important element in shaping young people. They understand that they can achieve what in their level and can compare themselves to other students. The results of these contests provide that our education is on par with leading global universities. Sophomore student of the Faculty of Law of Kazan University, Ayaz Ahmedshin, is one of the most successful kibber athletes according to Forbes rankings. His achievements attract attention from internet users. He has 180,000 followers on Twitter and 388,000 on Twitch. The university has commended students, authors, for best scientific papers in 2022. Kazan Federal University regularly holds such competitions, which gives students and educators opportunities for personal and career growth. 
Then young scholars participate in such competitions, they understand why they need to engage in research and thus develop relevant skills and competences. If you choose to study at Kazan Federal University, you won't regret about it. It is one of the oldest universities in Russia with a huge research base, the strongest teaching and scientific schools, comfortable living and studying conditions. That a beautiful Kazan city expecting you. About its main travel secrets and why it is home for a fusion of two cultures, we'll tell you in two weeks. Goodbye for now and have a great time!